There's been a buzz in the air lately, a palpable excitement surrounding ChatGPT and the incredible advancements in generative AI. From virtual assistants that mimic conversation to mind-boggling language models that generate astonishingly creative texts, the world of natural language processing has taken a giant leap forward. And at the heart of this revolution lies a game-changing technology called Transformers. Welcome back to Academy. Today, we embark on a captivating journey into the realm of natural language processing, or NLP. In our previous videos, we've discussed how NLP works, pre-processing techniques such as stemming, lemmatization, part of speech tagging, chatbots, and even speech recognition. But the key to understanding the applications of these techniques and eventually leading up to the cutting edge transformer technology is to take a step back and learn about the evolution of NLP and how we got where we are today. In today's video, we'll embark on a journey through time, tracing the footsteps of the very first approaches of creating NLP applications. We'll be discussing the shortcomings of each method to motivate why further progress was all the more necessary. So whether you're a language enthusiast, an AI aficionado, or simply curious to learn about all the wonders of NLP, this video is your ticket to understanding the backbone of modern generative AI. Let's jump right in. Meet Alex, a creative and imaginative individual who has always marveled at the power of words. Fueled by a burning desire to create a machine that could harness the art of storytelling, Alex dives into the world of natural language processing. As Alex explores the possibilities within NLP, a breakthrough concept called sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture catches his attention. The architectural design consists of two essential components, an encoder and a decoder. The magic lies in how the encoder and decoder work together. Let's say our eventual goal is to convert the cat sat on the mat to its French version. The encoder's task is to take the input sentence and convert it into a meaningful numerical representation for the machine. Encoders utilize a technology called LSTMs, or long-term, short-term memory units, to deal with different length inputs and outputs. It analyzes the input sentence word by word and extracts important information, context, and relationships. For example, it recognizes that cat and mat are nouns and that sat is a verb indicating an action. The encoder condenses this information into a representation that captures the essence of the sentence, such as um, a numerical vector as or a series of hidden states. It's like a translator that converts the raw text into a format that the machine can comprehend. Now, once the encoder has transformed the input sentence into a meaningful representation, the decoder steps in. The decoder's role is to take that representation and generate a new sequence, which could be a response, a translated sentence, or an entirely new story. It's important to note that the specific mapping between the numerical representation and the corresponding words in the translation is learned during the training process, where the model learns to associate encoded representations with their respective translations. It's like a storyteller using the encoded information to weave together a narrative that engages the audience. Using the sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture, Alex's machine initially showed promising results in generating captivating storylines. However, as with any early technology, there were limitations that Alex needed to address. The encoder-decoder model faced several challenges that hindered its performance. One of the primary issues was handling long sequences. The encoder-decoder struggled to capture the intricate details and dependencies present in lengthier inputs. As a result, the generated responses often lacked the necessary context and coherence to truly engage the audience. For example, if the input sentence was, after a long and tiring day at work, I decided to relax and watch a movie, but I fell asleep halfway through. The generated response would be, I fell asleep. The model fails to incorporate the information about the speaker's long and tiring day at work, their intention to relax, and the fact that they fell asleep while watching a movie. In the encoder and decoder model, long sequences can overwhelm the fixed length representation of the encoder. As the input sentence grows, it becomes increasingly difficult for the encoder to retain all of the necessary information and dependencies. This limitation is known as the vanishing gradient problem, where information from earlier parts of the sequence may gradually diminish as the gradients propagate through the layers during training. As a result, the decoder receives often incomplete and diluted rep representations, leading to the loss of context and coherence in the generated response. Additionally, the encoder-decoder model tended to produce generic and repetitive responses. 
If the input sentence is, what is your favorite color? Generated response one could be, my favorite color is blue, but generated response two would be, I also like blue. Instead of providing a personalized answer um, or exploring other possibilities, the model simply produces repeated responses centered around a single color. The encoder and decoder model um, lacks the mechanism to selectively attend to specific parts of the input sentence during decoding. And without this ability, um, the decoder tends to produce generic and repetitive responses. It relies solely on the fixed length encoded representation, which may not always capture the subtle nuances um, and the fine grained details required for generating diverse outputs. And as a result, um, the model generates responses that aren't tailored to the specific context or the diverse possibilities. So to overcome these shortcomings, brilliant minds in the field introduced a groundbreaking solution called attention mechanisms. The attention mechanism um, revolutionized NLP applications, addressing the limitations of the earlier sequence to sequence model. The way attention models work is fascinating. Imagine the input sentence as a group of words, each carrying a specific meaning. The encoder, equipped with the attention mechanism, processes the input sentence word by word. As it encodes each word, it assigns a weight or importance to that word based on its relevance to the overall context. And when it comes to generating the output, the decoder utilizes these assigned weights or attention scores to focus on the most relevant words in the input sentence. By selectively attending to specific words, the decoder can incorporate the necessary context to its generation process, resulting in more contextually accurate and coherent output. The attention mechanism empowers the machine to understand the dependencies between words, capture essential context, and produce diverse and contextually relevant responses. It allows the machine to pay attention to the right parts of the input sequence, greatly enhancing the storytelling capabilities. By incorporating um, attention mechanisms into the encoder-decoder architecture, Alex's machine overcame the limitations it previously faced. And now armed with attention models, the machine was capable of generating more contextually um, accurate and engaging storylines. However, um, as uh, remarkable as the attention mechanisms were, Alex soon encountered new challenges. You see, with attention models, the machine could focus on different parts of the input sentence, um, bringing a new level of context and coherence to its responses. However, when it came to capturing long-range dependencies and understanding intricate relationships between words, traditional attention models still fell short. Long-range dependencies refer to the relationships and dependencies between the words or elements in a sequence that are separated by a significant difference, or sorry, distance. Um, in the context of natural language processing, uh, it refers to the connections between words or phrases that are distant from each other in a sentence or a longer sequence. In a sentence, words that are um, farther apart can still have grammatical or semantic relationships that influence the overall meaning. And so understanding and capturing these long range dependencies are crucial for generating um, coherent and contextually accurate responses in NLP tasks, such as um, machine translation, text summarization, or dialogue systems. If the input sentence is, the cat sat on the mat purring contently as the fire crackled in the fireplace. Let's assume that the model assigns attention weights based on the immediate context, where each word attends primarily to its neighboring words. Now let's see how this limitation could affect the generated response. The cat sat on the mat as the fire crackled. In this example, the attention model might primarily attend to cat, sat, fire, and crackled, as these words have higher attention weights. However, the model might not effectively capture the relationship between purring contently and in the fireplace, due to their relative distance and lower weights. As a result, the generated response fails to include important details about the cat's purring and the crackling fire, which are crucial to conveying the full meaning and context of the original sentence. Alex realized that um, this limitation hindered the machine's capability to generate responses that fully captured the complex relationships between words. And that's where self-attention stepped in to revolutionize this field. Um, self-attention, also known as self-attention or cross-attention, um, expanded the scope of attention mechanisms by allowing the model to focus on um, not only the input sequence, but also on different parts of the sequence itself. Um, self-attention work uh, works by assigning weights or attention scores to each word within the input sentence. And these scores are calculated based on um, the relevance and importance of each word in relation to all other words within the sequence. In other words, the model can attend to different words within the same sequence 
um, considering their inter interdependencies. Uh, Let's take the same example sentence as before, but see how self-attentions can capture long-range dependencies now. The cat sat on the mat, purring contently, as the fire crackled in the fireplace. Input encoding. Each word in the sentence attends to itself and all other words, including those at a distance. The second is attention calculation. The word cat assigns a high attention weight not only to itself, but also to the other words in the sentence. This attention weight signifies that cat relates to these other words in the sentence. Similarly, each word assigns attention weights to all other words, capturing their dependencies and relationships. And the third is aggregation. The attention weights are used to calculate a weighted sum of the input embeddings, considering the contribution of each word based on the attention weights. Um, with self-attentions, Alex's machine could now dig deeper into the structure of the input sentence, and it could capture the nuances of language, identify dependencies between the words, and generate responses that truly reflected um, the context and relationships within the text. But even the remarkable um, advancements of self-attentions, even with these, Alex encountered um, new challenges. Self-attention, while highly effective, proved to be computationally expensive, posing difficulties when it came to scaling the models for um, larger data sets and more extensive training. Self-attentions are computationally expensive because um, in uh, compared to the previous models, um, due to their inherent parallelism and quadratic complexity of calculating these attention scores. Um, in attention mechanisms, each word attends to every other word in the input sequence. That means for a sentence with n words, the attention mechanism um, needs to calculate n squared attention scores. And the computation um, complexity increases quadratically um, as the input sentence uh, length grows. And so Alex realized that to overcome the computational uh, challenges posed by self-attentions, um, a more efficient and scalable solution was needed. And that's where transformers enter the picture. Transformers are a type of neural network architecture that incorporates self-attentions as a fundamental building block. Let's take an example to understand how transformers work and why they're effective. Consider the following input sentence, the cat sat on the mat. In a transformer model, the input sentence is first embedded into vector representations, known as word embeddings. These embeddings capture the semantic meaning of each word in a continuous vector space. Next, the transformer model operates on the entire sequence simultaneously, performing these three steps. First is self-attention. At each layer, the self-attention mechanism computes attention scores for each word by comparing it with all other words in the sequence. These attention scores determine the importance or relevance of each word with respect to others. In our example, the transformer would compute attention scores between each word, the with cat sat on, the mat, cat with other words, and so on. The second is weighted combination. Based on the attention scores, the transformer model takes a weighted combination of the embeddings of all words in the input sequence. Each word's embedding is multiplied by its corresponding attention score, and the weighted embeddings are summed together. This step allows the model to give more importance to the relevant words and contextually attend to different parts of the sentence. And the third is feedforward networks. After the weighted combination, the resulting representations go through a feedforward network. This network applies nonlinear transformations to the representations, introducing complexity and capturing more intricate relationships between words. The process of self-attention, weighted combination, and feed-forward networks is repeated across multiple layers of the transformer model, and this enables the model to refine its understanding of the input sentence, capturing both um, local and global dependencies, and incorporating context from uh, the entire sequence. Um, and what makes transform is truly unique and essential in NLP is their ability to process entire sequences of data in parallel rather than sequentially. Unlike traditional um, recurrent neural networks or convolutional neural networks that process inputs one element at a time, transformers operate um, on the entire sequence simultaneously. And this parallel processing massively improves efficiency, making it possible to hand handle larger data sets and more complex models. Transformers have become the backbone of many modern NLP applications, um, including uh, technologies like ChatGPT and GPT-4. And their ability to capture complex relationships and dependencies within language 
language has revolutionized tasks such as language translation, summarization, question answering, and more. In fact, transformers have been have become so pivotal and in, in, in NLP um, that they have spurred the development of comprehensive libraries and frameworks like Hugging Face, providing pre-trained transformer models and tools for developers and researchers to harness their power. With Transformers, Alex's machine achieved its goal of understanding and generating stories. It became um, a testament to the remarkable progress in NLP and the potential that lies within generative AI. Now, we've covered a lot in this video, so let's go through a quick summary to tie everything together. We began with the sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture, which involved an encoder and a decoder. However, this model had limitations, struggling with long se sequences, context capture, and generic responses. To overcome these shortcomings, attention mechanisms were introduced. They allowed the model to focus on different parts of the input sentence, enhancing context and coherence. However, attention models still face challenges in capturing long-range dependencies and understanding intricate word relationships. To address these challenges, self-attentions, also known as self-attention and cross-attention, were introduced. Self-attentions enable the model to not only attend to the input sequence, but also to different parts of the sequence itself. This breakthrough enhanced the understanding of word dependencies and improved accuracy. Despite their effectiveness, self-attentions had computational limitations, making them difficult to scale for larger models and datasets. This led to the development of transformers. Transformers revolutionized NLP by incorporating self-attentions into a parallel processing architecture that operates on the entire sequence simultaneously. Well, that's all we have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed learning about the evolution of NLP, and if so, please give it a like and comment down below another field that you'd like to know the evolution of, as well as any cool ways that you've used ChatGPT. And if you're new here, then please make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss any videos that'll help you on your journey towards mastering artificial intelligence. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.